welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for March 31st. I'm the pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Salisbury, North Carolina, and I'd like to read to you today from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the first four verses, and I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. I want you to know, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same supernatural food, and all drank the same supernatural drink. For they drank from the supernatural rock, which followed them. And the rock was Christ. This is the word of God. Luther writes about that last verse. Christ has been typified by various signs and objects in the Old Testament, and the rock is one of them. Note first that the material rock spoken of had a place independently of man's labors and far from man's domain in the wilderness. So Christ is a truly insignificant object in the world, disregarded and unnoticed, nor is he indebted to human labor. Water flowing from the rock is contrary to nature. It is purely miraculous. The water typifies the quickening spirit of God who proceeds from the condemned, crucified, and dead Christ. Thus life is drawn from death, and this by the power of God. Christ's death is our life, and if we would live, we must die with him. Moses strikes the rock at the command of God and points to it, thus prefiguring the ministerial office which by word of mouth strikes from the spiritual rock, the spirit. For God will give his spirit to none without the instrumentality of the word and the ministerial office instituted by him for this purpose, adding the command that nothing be preached but Christ. Had not Moses obeyed the command of God to smite the rock with his rod, no water would have ever flowed from it. His rod represents the rod of the mouth of which Isaiah speaks. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. By this statement about the rock, the apostle makes all the figures and signs granted to the people of Israel by the word of God refer to Christ. For where the word of God is, there Christ is. All the words and promises of God are concerning Christ. Christ himself makes the serpent of Moses refer to himself. We may truly say that the Israelites look upon the same serpent we behold, for they saw the spiritual serpent that followed them, or Christ, on the cross. The beholding was believing in the word of God, with the serpent for a sign, even as their spiritual drinking was believing in the word of God with the rock for a sign. We may say the same concerning the cloud. The children of Israel walked under the same cloud that shadows us. They walked under the spiritual cloud that followed them, Christ. So it is left for us, as always, to believe. But to believe what? To believe the Word, the Word of God. That is faith, to believe what God has spoken. As crazy sometimes as it seems, we are to believe his word and nothing else. We are to put our trust in what God says and in nothing else, and certainly not in our works, which flow through faith. Let's pray. Thank you for this reminder, Lord. Help us to remember that it's not from our toil, not by our works, but by your cross. Give us such faith to believe for Christ's sake. Amen. Thanks a bunch for joining me today for Reading the Word with Luther. I hope you'll be back with me again tomorrow.